Hello, everybody. Hello, Angela. Hi. Be lucky. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Come on in. Don't be a stranger. Hello, spooky wife. Spooky wife, Amy. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Millie and Janice. Hello, hello. Hello. I hope everybody makes it in today. Tarhi for life. Hello. And green eyed PI. Hello, everybody. YouTuber. Hiya. Hiya, Chicky. Yes, yes, knitting. Hello. Cripple Creek Farm. Hello. Y'all put them hearts in today. Green, purple, blue, pink, everything and everybody we've talked about, all the colors. I don't care for everybody. White, everything, all the things today. Hello. Feel the love, GG, sunshine. All the people. I hope you had a happy Sunday. Not crazy, but crazy lady. Hello. YouTuber. Predecessor. Howdy. Howdy. Welcome, everybody. Sunday, April 14th. KC Chiefs for life. Hello, Angela. Thank you for the red hearts, purple, green, all the things, all the things. I hope we can see everybody from all around the world. It's story time just to kind of chill out today for a little bit. Debbie Clark, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you're from, wherever you're from. Kate, Kate Ritter, hello, hello. Little Dev, I love all my people. Give everybody a few minutes to get in here, one love. Yes, yeah, story time, story time. Dino Might, hello. Angela, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll talk about Sebastian tonight or this evening sometime. I just thought that I would come on here. I, I got this at the request last night when I was doing my story on Janet Mark. And this is a story when I grew up and it was solved finally there was so many twists and turns with this and I hope the people that because a lot of people was not born at this time hey Reiki a lot of people a lot of you were not even born and didn't know about this case this tore Nashville in half. This is the case that took Nashville and turned it upside down. It really did. This was the beginning of, in my opinion, true crime right here. This was the Marsha Trimble case and it was finally solved. Finally, your 1969 model there, south of Nashville. So, Knitting, you probably heard of this case. Absolutely. Absolutely. It might not draw in a lot of people because it is a case that's so old, and that's okay. I was explaining to other people what's kind of funny. When they think it don't get much money or <laughs> it's something smiley don't talk about that can get them money that they don't can't bash a lot to get money. <laughs> it's so funny. And I don't care. 
I don't care. That's really sad. It does prove a point, don't it? Hey, Magoo. Hello, hello, hello. But I'm going to talk about all the things, not just the popular things. There's story and stories and history to be told. There's things that people need to hear. Yeah, haters going to hate, and that's okay. Yeah, the name rings a bell. Well, I guarantee you your mama knows about it or your family knows about it. I know about it, and I'll give a little history on it as we get down in it. It took me almost all day to write out my feelings about it. See, that's what I do. I take the facts from the story, and I write my feelings from my head and heart. That's why the haters hate me, because they can't do that. They're not me. And we're going to watch a lot of clips, because there is a lot on this story. And I do hope people come in and watch. This girl's mama and daddy. Oh, Lordy, Jesus. So sad. And you got to remember back in the day, they didn't have all the things that we have now, like YouTube and, and all the things. They just didn't have it. Okay. But I'm going to go over this little girl's case that was solved. Finally, and it was back in 1975 because I want to, because I want to, and because I was asked to. There's going to be trigger warnings. There will be trigger warnings in here. And if you can't take the trigger warnings, I suggest that maybe you come back a different time or if you feel you're getting oozy or something like that, maybe you might want to step out of the room. This is not going to be a show where little kids need to be around. Let me just say that now. You'll kind of know, and I'll try to warn you ahead of time. I, I also like to put out these every once in a while even as heart-wrenching as it is, because a lot of people, especially these younger people, don't realize things like this can really, really happen in things that we are seeing today. And again, that's one of the reasons that I did put out what I put out last night. But I'd like everybody to participate if they will, if they want to. I was a child myself at this time when this happened. I lived on one side of the Nashville, not the ritzy side they lived in. And it's ritzy now, and it was ritzy then. Back in 1975, I was a child myself, long hair, long blonde hair, all long blonde hair, cotton blonde. She had long cotton blonde hair, blue eyes, pretty little girl. It was scary for me and all my friends. It was. We didn't hear of these things in in Tennessee, we, we just didn't hear these things. Especially they didn't hear of those things over on that side of town. I was very scared. Back then, I was a shy little girl. Believe that or not, I was a shy little girl. I was very shy. Um, we all at school back then, hey, Estelle, we all sold, you know, of course, 
you know, she was in Girl Scout. She sold Girl Scout cookies, but we also sold candy bars, um, went door to door. School always had us doing something, and it was nothing back then to come home with something. We used to always have the, we had these things, I forget what they were called, and I don't even remember if the school did it, or, you know, we always had these little punch boards, and, um, you know, I, I don't know, we, all, we always had things to get prizes, and collect money, and do all the things back then. True story. But Marsha Trimble sold Girl Scout cookies. She was in the Girl Scouts. So yes, there was fear by all of us, everybody in Middle Tennessee, in Nashville. Even if we didn't want to tell our parents, there was fear that this would happen to us. It was a huge deal. And again, most all of your creators that are here on YouTube now, you weren't even born. You weren't born. And if you were, you were just babies. And I doubt you had any idea about this case. I'm just saying. And back then, it really wasn't like it is now. That's for sure. Back in 1975, that was like 48 years ago. I was like seven or eight years old, seven going on eight, something like that. But her name was Marsha Trimble, Marsha Virginia Trimble. Virginia, her middle name, like her mother, her mother's name was Virginia Trimble, is Virginia Trimble. She was a nine-year-old little girl who lived in Green Hills, again, the rich side of town. Nothing like that ever happened there. Nothing. And back then, it's rich now, but back then, whew, rich side of town. Really cute little girl, blonde hair, as you can see, blue eyes. Normal, happy, cute little girl. Again, Marsha sold Girl Scout cookies. And one day, she got her order back and she was delivering those orders of cookies that she got. And it was February 25th, 1975 in that Green Hills neighborhood in Nashville, Tennessee, when Marsha Trimble disappeared. Every day for months, it was on the news. But remember, back then, we had no cable TV. There was no YouTube, no Facebook, none of the things that we have now, no cell phones. We had those plug-in, rotary, dial-up with the cord. You couldn't walk out of one room, phones. Mm. Y'all wouldn't know what to do with those. But imagine that. It was just good old, plain old police detective work. Yeah, it was four, it was about four channels. That was it. And sometimes you had to get these, we called them rabbit ears, these antennas that go on there. And sometimes you have to get aluminum foil to even get the chan the channels. It was, and and you're right, that was the good old days, honey. That was the good old days for everything. Sometimes I wish we could just turn back time. Just turn back time. Would I go back? Yeah. Do I regret anything? Not really. But would I go back 
Yeah, I would. I'd give anything sometimes just to go back, just even for a few minutes. I miss some of those days. Kelly said, this is a mother of a missing child in Kentucky. This case in and out, you know, this case in and out. Yeah. It tore Nashville up. It took the whole entire innocence of Nashville, Tennessee. This case rocked Nashville the, and Kentucky and around. But this was off the charts, man. But imagine just good old fashioned police work, black and white TVs, regular news, three, four channels, word of mouth. Word of mouth it did work. That's what people mean nowadays when they say, I'm going to say something and I'm going to tell this person or I'm going to go on YouTube or Facebook now that we have that. And word of mouth goes a long way because it does. It really does. That We didn't have Amber Alerts back then. There was no Amber Alerts. Amber Alerts didn't even start until 1996. So she didn't have the luxury <clears throat> of having the Amber Alerts. The, the rotaries are still good. <laughs> yeah, for pow power outages. You're right. You're right. I didn't even freaking think about that. You're absolutely right. I need to get a little bit smarter, don't I? See, Smiley don't know nothing. <laughs> I just need to start using my brain a little bit better. My brain's all filled up. <laughs> um, yeah, they would be taking shifts out searching. And I was trying to find out today. I couldn't remember. See, back then, but I couldn't remember if... They had the milk cartons. Again, I was seven or eight, so I couldn't remember if they had the milk cartons then or not, if she was on there or not, and I couldn't find it. So, if anybody knows, let me know. Um, that used to terrify me. I, I, mean, I mean, seriously. Um, I don't remember ever seeing Marsha on the milk cartons, but... Um, you know, you see the kid, and it's good for the adults and stuff. But yeah, remember when they put missing people on the milk cartons? Um, so yeah, that happened. Hey, Daily Tab. Um, so you know that would happen. Um, and you'd see the kids' faces, but I don't remember if Marsha was on there or not. But I know there was no Amber Alert because that didn't happen until nineteen ninety six. Um, so I'm not sure about that. Um, I know, I think they stopped by the time Marsha was gone, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this was like, um, uh, when Marsha got gone, the entire Nashville, young and old, had lost their whole innocence. It's, it, it, they just did. There's no other words. They've said it in the news. They still say it to this day. It's just the way it is. It's sad, but it's a true fact. Um, her case had a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, and it took over for 30 years to solve this case. It did finally get solved, but not without a lot of twists and turns not without somebody innocent being put in jail and their life being ruined. Um, we'll get to that. Because one time they thought it was solved and, and they were wrong. And not without her mom and dad getting a divorce. I mean, there's a lot to this. Um, there's also a, a, a documentary on this. I want y'all to listen and pay attention to because her mom went 
decades earlier to the chief police in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Finally sat down with him in his house. And finally, after all these years, decided she wanted to see Marsha's pictures the day they found her because she couldn't look at them. She couldn't look at them. Hello, everybody coming in. She couldn't look at them at the time. And I don't blame her. There's so much to this story. So much. And I've, I, I'm, I'm, I've tried to tell it from my heart the best I can. And then we're going to, there's a lot of clips. Um, in fact, let's just go to one right now that I could find way back when, real quick. It's a short one. Let me try to present it. I would Hold on, that's not it. Where did it go? I oh, know, good and well. I just saw that. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, where did it go? No, that's not it. Hold on. All right, sorry about that. Let's. This is her mom. Now hold on a minute, Lord. You were seven. Yeah, I was seven going on eight, I believe.
But somebody was arrested before him. So it was a long poster. How do I get that off? So there's a little bit more to it than that, and I'll go into reading it. But yeah, it's really sad what she said when she, when um, there it's a little bit more in length. Uh, that other one was really far back. Um, and so when I started to play it, I think it went to another one because I don't think it goes that far back. It's really far. I'll try to find it in a little bit. But um, so she was just saying that uh, 40 years, she decided to finally ask to see the photos from um, the police in Hendersonville after decades. And you know, she saw those horrible, horrible, horrible um, pictures of her. And she just couldn't, you know, no longer do it. But then uh, there's a bigger piece of it in the Tennessean. And, um, you know, because, you know, trigger warning, it, you know, it showed things where Marsha was trigger warning, you know, and black and blue. There was a huge chunk pulled out up here with blood and there was throw up on her and it was horrible. I, I, I don't even have words. I couldn't even think of words to say or come up with. Um, I just couldn't imagine a mother seeing those things. And especially after all of those years. Um, I just couldn't. And... She, she said, she, again, you heard it. She told him to turn the computer off. And she just screamed. And he went to his cabinet and got, you know, the Jack Daniels and poured her a shot glass. And in the Tennessean, it said she sipped on it. And um, this, the Tennessean was printed April 26th for the, those of you that want to read the whole thing, 2015. And she remarried. So again, so her, her name, her last name is Ritter. So Miss Ritter, um, said 
if I had a pew pew, I would blow his brains out and enjoy every spurt and minute of it. That's what she told the Hendersonville police at his home. And I cannot blame her one bit. And she said she just went outside and screamed and, you know, she didn't want to forgive him. All the forgiveness went out the window, but in this interview, you know, she just laid it at God's feet or whatever. And so that was that, but hmm, it just makes me cringe thinking about that. Um, yeah, complete, complete closure. Yeah. Beyond horrifying. I just can't imagine. Um, but this was labeled, uh, back in 1975, Nashville's most notorious murder mystery. And they did not find little Marsha for 33 long days. Her mother did not want to see her <clears throat> body after that, that day. Her husband at that time, Charlie Trimble, um, he talked her out of it. And that was a good thing at that time, I believe. He told her, you don't want to remember Marsha like, you know, like that. Um, he said, you want to remember our little girl happy, blonde hair, blue eyes, running out the front door happy. And she told him, yes, I do. And he told her, well, we don't know what body, what her, what condition her body will be in. So... You know, she, her mom didn't want to see that at that time. She didn't look at any of the crime scene photos or anything like that. So she called, uh, again, Mickey Miller at the Hendersonville. He was the police chief. And, you know, this is decades later. So she asked him if she could see those pictures, if he still had them of Marsha's um, body. And the day she was found, she wanted to see her. And he tried to talk her out of it. Chief Miller did. And and he couldn't talk her out of it. And um, that's when she went to, you know, look and everything. And, um, you know, that's what, what happened. You know, again, trigger warning. You know, all her mouth was black and blue and all the things. And she cried and cried and cried and cried. Cried and cried. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, um, she said until she felt this calm peace just come over her. And she said she got it out of her system. She said once she got it out of her system, she said she just felt freer than a bird. Because she said she told the reporter that it felt like she'd been in jail and she turned that God turned a key and let her out of jail. She said, that's what it felt like more than three decades um, of prayers for her daughter Um for uh, her daughter's killer. Um, she said it just stopped that day. And she said that day, she said that man is on his own before God and his city. Mm, that was her quote. That was her quote. And I can understand that too. So on Easter Sunday on, in 1975, Marsha's body was found. But before, before that, she was last seen alive um, by aerial photos um, that showed like a pathway. And um, it was, it, it, she was gone like 33 days 
okay, 33 days prior to, and like her house was at the bottom of this, of the photos, okay, and there was this bush, like this tree, this bush there, and that was the last time anybody saw her, and um, her little body was found in this garage, uh, it wasn't kind of really on her property, but it was at, and I'm not doxing anybody, it's all in the papers and everywhere, at 4007 Estes Road, and that was like a rock throw from her house, but the thing is, they had already searched that garage in those 33 days she was gone, they had already searched the garage, and, um, they didn't see her or anything. So they had two medical examiners and one of the medical examiners workers, uh, they worked all night long to find out how long she had been deceased. And it was very important because then it was, you know, then it was like, um, it was on to find the person that did this to her or persons or whatever that did this to her. Because again, it rocked Nashville. It rocked Tennessee. Everybody was shocked. Okay. So, um, and they basically, it, it was just not good things that had happened to her. And, um, trigger warning. I was a little girl and I didn't see it in my research today, but if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, there was things shoved down her mouth in that garage and I didn't even know about those um essay things back then but if I remember correctly some of her clothing may have been shoved down her mouth I'm just saying that's how I remember it okay um but but it, also that did happen to her that's a fact Anyway, tr big triggers. My heart is sitting here pounding because I cannot imagine any of this. <sighs> now that I'm sitting here talking about it, it's it, it's when you care about kids and you care about stuff, it, it does something to your body. It just, my heart just flutters and just, even though this case is so old, it just really, mm, Flutter, flutter. I, I can't even tell y'all what this does. But in the meantime, they were really thinking hard and trying to find out when she was deceased and trying to find out the person or persons who did this, you know, the time of deceasement or whatever. And hello to everybody coming in and hugs, hugs from Panama City to Tallahassee. We love Tallahassee over here. And I hope they find Lori Page. Any new news, let me know. Lori Page strong over here. Mm. But it was definitely a scary time. And again, Nashville was never the same. One medical examiner said Marsha was deceased 10 to 15 days before her body was found. That means somebody had her because she was gone 33 days. She was gone 33 days. She was deceased, they said, 10 to 15 days, right? But another medical examiner in Memphis said he would not speculate, speculate, he would not speculate on the time of deceasement. And Law said, we don't need two medical examiners debating this crap. Basically, they didn't need all that. So they found out the next day that Marsha was, um, to death and in, in, in a garage about 11 a.m. 
just a stone's throw away from home at 4007 Estes Road. Uh, and the home belonged to, again, I'm not doxing anybody, again, uh, uh, of John Throp. Throp, I may be saying that wrong. And John said he, he has been in that garage since in those 33 days, he gave an interview that he was in that garage within those 33 days prior, you know, within, within that, not prior to within that. And it's hard to believe that there was, you know, a little body in there at that time. Um, but then chief police Joe Casey said, yeah, that was very possible. It was very possible that that could happen. Absolutely. I love this comment. And people need he Absolutely. Bingo. Bingo. Hey, Carol. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, it sure did. Absolutely. And um, what baffled police most was that she had been dead 10 to 15 days, but she was missing for 33. And looking at the body, it did not look like she was dead past two weeks. Um, um, and that was said by the police chief and the attorney general. And obviously it was odd that the body was, you know, not more decomposed, trigger warning. They had speculated at one time that it was possible she was even kept maybe in a freezer. Now that was just speculated. And I remember that as a little girl. I don't know if they ever found that out or not, but that was just speculation. Um, the garage had all also been searched again when she had went missing and nobody saw her. And that was, you know, that was a fact when they found her, there was seven, seven, seven boxes of Girl Scout cookies near her body on the left side of her. But they say it's possible because of all the clutter that was around in the garage that they did look over her. When they found her, um, they went back over to the Trimble home. They told the mom and dad, Virginia and Charlie, to sit down and they gave them the bad news. And of course, I can't imagine that they were crushed. Miss Trimble, they said, immediately, immediately squealed out to God. So fast forward it a little bit. Well, before we fast forward it, let's go here. They did suspect a young man, a kid at the time. His name was Jeffrey Walmick. This is kind of where it got hairy. Everybody in Nashville thought this Jeffrey Walmick did it and was guilty. They say he was a good kid. He had a sense of humor, but he was kind of full of himself. At the same time, they questioned him. They took his blood and his DNA. They did all the things. Everybody was side-eyeing him.
his tests come back inconclusive. They served warrants. You know, he went to jail. Um, I think he spent a year in jail. Yeah, Jeffrey Womack was the first person because they charged him in this case in 79, four years later. And they found out they were wrong. That was in 79 and he got out in 80. I don't know if he spent a whole year or not, but he got out in 80. He was released because they had a lack of evidence. Everything was inconclusive with the blood and all the stuff. Okay, so at that time, you know, it took a big strain on, you know, when stuff like this happens, it can either pull families close together or tear them apart. Now, I don't pretend to know what, the mom and dad's relationship was. But I can only imagine on top of this Jeffrey situation, in and out, the police, and not knowing if their daughter's ever going to get justice. Why, why, why? Again, we don't have social media back then. All the things not knowing if there's somebody running loot, what is going on, all the things, the mom's working, um, you know, just all the things. Who, who knows? And then again, you got the daughter gone. Again, this is why when something happens in these other cases I work, I personally don't understand these people who have zero emotions, zero, it's okay, your, your kid's gone, it's whatever. This ain't how we see things like that. We just don't. I mean, you know, if your kid's gone or passes away or whatever, there's, you have feelings. I mean, hell, your dog gets hit in the road and you have feelings where I come from. I, I, I'm just saying. But anyway, so we don't know. It either pulls you apart. So in the meantime, Charlie and Virginia, they go their separate ways. They get a divorce. You know, and it is it is what it is. It just happens. Nobody faults nobody. It, it is what it is, man. They've been through a very, very traumatic, traumatic thing in their life. So moving forward to 2008, 2008. Now we're in 2008 from 1975 to 2008. Hello, everybody coming in. Thank you for joining us. In 2008, there was a man indicted in this case in the 1975 case of Marsha Trimble. I imagine this time they're thinking, what is it for real? Is it, you know, whatever? It happened in 1975. And um, his name is Jerome Sidney Barrett. Well, Jerome Barrett was already in jail for another murder in 1975 and Barrett was awaiting trial on the offing of a Vanderbilt student named Sarah Des Perez no joke 
And of course, when you get in there and you start talking to inmates and they got tips and this, that, and the other. So they go out and they take his DNA after all them years. He's sitting right in the pokey. And his DNA is a match for Marsha Trimble. You can't fight that. But he wanted to. He tried to. He's still appealing. Or he was. Hell, he may be dead now. I don't know. He wanted a new trial because he said he had ineffective counsel. He had ineffective counsel. Well, his lawyer didn't want him to talk or bring something up because, well, if he did, then he would have to bring out that at the same time that he what he did to Marsha that all of his other past shenanigans would come out that he did what he did to Sarah Des Perez and all the things So he wanted a new trial. So that happened. So I can only imagine that that took a toll once again on her mom and her dad. Yeah, but CBC, the DNA matched Marsha's. Yeah, everyone wants to appeal. And they're going to try. That's for sure. They're going to try. Hey, Nico. I did, Nico. Absolutely. Um, but you couldn't beat that. He was already tied up in a little bow and handed to them on a silver platter. He was sitting right up in the jail already. They didn't have to do much work. They didn't have to do much work. He was charged with Assault and M of Marsha Trimble after the DNA linked him to that crime. And he has been convicted in other attacks on women and children around the same time as Marsha Trimble. And on July 18th, 2009, a jury convicted 62-year-old Jerome Barrett of two counts of second degree. He was sentenced to 44 years in prison, but he will die there. He's 63 years old. He won't ever get out. He won't see the light of day. He won't. That's where he'll meet his maker from prison. And I'm glad her mother and her father, but I'm glad her mother will finally get, you know, peace, closure. 
That's what I hope happens in all these cases. I hope they get the peace and closure. Yeah, that was a great day, Tammy T. You know, when you're going on about your life and you think probably 33 years or 30 years, however long it is later, nothing's going to be done and you'll never ever see the day. You know, it just happens. It just happens. That has to be a wonderful feeling. Has to be a wonderful feeling. I wanted to play some news clips, but look, y'all, all y'all got to do is um, type in, type in, there's no sense in wasting time to do that. Type in Marsha Tremble. I promise you that, you know, and I'm sorry about that. I promise you there is tons and tons and tons. I mean, I. Uh oh, shoot, I don't know who that is, but myself. <laughs> I mean, there is tons if you just do it. Um, you can type in her mom's name, Virginia Tremble Ritter, R I T T E R, Marsha Tremble. Um, you know, there is tons of data on her tons you know go on the YouTubes and look her up on YouTubes um, I mean it's just tons and tons and tons you see hold on a minute there's a documentary on YouTube um, I wish I could find that one I wanted to play. Hold on a minute. Let me look on my phone. Maybe it's easier because I'm used to it. Hold on. 11 years ago. 11 years ago. 10 years ago. Um, one year. Six years. Okay, this is one. It's only one minute. Okay, maybe that's why I missed it. Hold on. It's just a news clip. 16 years ago. Tonight, a man arrested for raping a Vanderbilt student in 1975 Ooh, will now be looked at for one of Nashville's most notorious crimes. Jerome Barrett is 60 years old. He was arrested Monday in Memphis. He's charged with sexually assaulting and killing Vanderbilt student Sarah Vanetta Dupre. Police say they're looking at whether he was also involved in the sexual assault and murder of Marcia Tremble. She was just nine years old when she was raped and killed while selling Girl Scout cookies in 1975. Investigators say it is normal for police to look at possible links in cases that may have happened the same year, in this case, 1975. We talked to Marcia Trimble's mother, Virginia Ritter, tonight by telephone. I never lost hope, and hope I never will. And this, if this does not pan out that uh, this man is not the killer, then we'll just go on believing that uh, the next one will get on the next. Barrett was released from jail in 2002. He served 26 years for raping a Belmont student. Okay, that was, yeah, that was 16 years ago. And that's when they got Barrett or, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it was really weird. Um, oh, that's me. I started saying, who's live about this case? That's me. <laughs> See? And we already played his mom. But if you go down... There is tons and tons uh, on here. But one year ago, um, there's people that have talked about this on, there's, you know, 11 years ago. I mean, she was a cutie pie. Look at her. Look at her. You know, there are little short things on here. Uh, key moments. There's three key moments on that one. Um, so go to YouTube and then go to Google. There's all types of things. Hold on. Um, you know, the little Marsha Trimble story. Uh, Ten minutes. There she is when she was a little girl. But, 
Okay, that's the first, that's the Womack boy that they um, arrested first and they were wrong. So it, ta it talks about him, you know, it talks about him. Um, but this is the man that was convicted of, this is the man that was, wait a minute. This took the stand to ask for a new trial. News Channel 5's Mark Ballinger was the only reporter in the courtroom to hear his testimony, which included an alibi never heard by jurors. Yes. That's, That's what, who that was my position. Did that. Jerome Barrett still says he didn't kill Marsha Tremble. A jury convicted him of a murder five years ago. Really now, trial, Barrett okay. wants a new trial because he says right. jurors yeah. did not hear all the information. His petition is based on a claim of ineffective counsel. February the 25th, the date that Marsha Trimble was killed, I was in Chicago, Illinois, attending a, a giant uh, Islamic f festival. And I had been accompanied with uh, a number of other Muslims. He says his attorney decided not to give the information to the jury because the only witness who could corroborate the alibi had a criminal past and health issues. I went along with it at that time. You know, I went along with it at that time. Uh, I trusted his judgment. It's one of several arguments in the 67-year-old's petition for a new trial. The state's case was based on DNA and statements from two inmates who say Barrett made incriminating statements inside the Davidson County Jail. Guilty of second-degree murder. When a jury convicted Barrett, it closed one of Nashville's most infamous cold cases. Trimble was just nine years old when she was killed delivering Girl Scout cookies in her Green Hills neighborhood in 1975. The case went unsolved for more than 30 years until a police database matched Barrett's DNA with DNA found on Tremble. Barrett claims he wanted an independent analysis of the DNA. And, and the cross-contamination, not just cross-contamination, but substitution, inadvertent or, or, or intentional. His attorney testified it may not have made any difference. He also feared introducing the evidence would have let the jury hear about Barrett's criminal past, which includes a conviction of murder and multiple sexual assaults. Judge Steve Dozier took today's testimony under advisement and he'll issue an opinion in the next few weeks. At the Birch Building, Mark Bellinger, News Channel 5 HD. Barrett also wants his conviction for killing Vanderbilt student Sarah Dupre thrown out. Dupre was murdered in her apartment three weeks before Trimble was killed. Barrett claims ineffective counsel in that case as well. Judge Steve Dozier says he'll make rulings in both cases. So I guess he can just go around doing that to everybody. DNA matches all these different people. And in every case, you have ineffective counsel. Wonder if he had the same lawyer. <laughs> just wondering. Yeah, he did it. So there's that part. But yeah, I just wanted to bring y'all that I, I know it's intense. I know it's a lot of trigger warnings. But man, that is something. Thank you, Millie. I know. Oh, there's the article of the Tennessean. Yes. Um, I know it's something in history that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, I hate to say history. We shouldn't label stuff like this history. Um. I don't know how you would say it, but um, I don't know. You know, I really don't know, but I don't know what the proper, I, I just don't know how to say it. It is what it is, but I, I feel like everybody needs to know these things, and especially if you're on here doing this kind of stuff. It happens. It's real life things. People, you know, it, 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 it happens. And um, unfortunately, there are people out there that harm children. Thank you. And sometimes, like when we're covering one thing a lot, a lot, a lot, even though this is hor horrible, horrible, no words. I, as a person, have to step away from one thing and get my mind cleaned out for just a minute or two, hour or two, and go to something else. 
and I'll come back to what I'm doing later tonight. Even though this ain't much of a break, but at least I know she's in the arms of Jesus. And this case has been solved. Justice is being served on this. That's the only thing we can take away from this. Yep, CB, actually, correct. Yep, exactly. Yep. So, again, it's just to give y'all a little something different. And a little knowledge, too. So, here's another one we can kind of... Just put to rest along with her mom. You know. So I guess I will see you on the streets. And I thank you so much for listening. And I hope you remain to have a good Sunday. And I'll see you sometime this afternoon. Um, go watch something happy. Go watch somebody happy. If there's anything happy out there. If not, go take a walk, get some fresh air, enjoy the rest of your day. It's still early yet. It's still early. And um, just enjoy your day. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I love you, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, Carol. Bye, everybody. Oh. Bye.